Good afternoon, Mr. Goldberg. This is going to be the first recording for the second observation. Okay. Um, as this, uh, as in last time, the session might cut off after 15 minutes, and I'll have to make a second um, part of it. So this is the first part. So class today, we'll be talking about eclipse and eclipses. Um, but before we begin, uh, let's review a little bit about the moon phases. Okay. So if you remember that we were talking about uh, how the moon orbits the sun, and uh, so to get a visualize a visualization of of this, um, if we can think of a merry-go-round, this is the example I gave you guys um, last session. That you can picture yourself as the person in the merry-go-round, uh, going around circling the Earth, which would be the center of the merry-go-round, and um, so as the if you're constantly facing the center of the merry-go-round as you spin around um you're always going to be facing the 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 earth the uh, you the moon will be always be facing the earth and so this whoever is on the earth is always going to be seeing the face of the moon which is the side that's always facing us okay <clears throat> okay um okay so as the moon revolves in its orbit around um, the Earth, the different sides of the sun are, are always being exposed. Um, different sides of the moon are always being exposed to the sun. We could visualize this as the person outside um, standing in for the sun. Uh, sometimes the, as you rotate, or as the you, the moon, rotates around the Earth, uh, sometimes you'll be facing the, the person or sun or Sometimes the back, uh, you'll have your back to the sun, okay? <clears throat> so as the moon goes around, um, we get these, these phases, okay? So the one side of the moon, half of the moon is always being exposed to the sun, uh, but that's not what we see on Earth. On Earth, we see these different phases, okay? Uh, and these phases are the different exposures of sunlight that we see from Earth. Okay, so we have eight different phases: new moon, waxing crescent, new moon, waxing crescent. Um, first quarter, we have the waxing gibbous, full moon, wanting gibbous, third quarter, and wanting crescent. <clears throat> and then it repeats into new moon again. Okay. So one thing I want you guys to remember is that waxing, uh, the, the sides that are waxing crescent and waxing gibbous are given the name waxing because waxing means to get brighter. And wanting, the sides after the full moon, the, um, the phases after the full moon, they're called wanting because they get dimmer. Wanting means to get dimmer or darker. Okay. <clears throat> so... Um, where is it? Okay, so So I want you guys to go ahead, uh, take a minute to take two minutes to read and answer uh, both questions and answer based on the image that is provided here with the sun, the earth, and the moon in, the, um, in their respective positions. Okay, so the first question is, what is the name of this moon phase? M this phase being that the earth is here um, with the moon um, on this side of the earth. <clears throat> and question 1b would be, what is the phase that would follow immediately after this one? Okay, so here we have some of uh, the students who had answered this question. Uh, the name of this moon phase is the first quarter, uh, which would be correct. And the phase that would follow immediately would be the waxing gibbous. And I would... <clears throat> Um, go back to this. Um, 
this slide, which gives them the visual. Okay, so the answer would be yes, first quarter moon, and the one that would follow immediately after this phase is the one in gibbous. Okay, we know that because the Earth has just, um, the Earth, sorry, the moon um, has just left the position of new moon, which is when it is on the same side as the sun, and it is not, um, it, it is direct exactly one quarter of the way into the full phase. So if it helps to, for you guys to memorize, we can divide the phases into four quarters. Um, that, uh, that is where we get the name, um, first quarter, where we get the names uh, first and third quarter. Okay, because they, the moon phases are divided into, um, can be divided into four quarters. Okay, with full moon being the second quarter. But we call it full moon because it um, it just makes sense to because the moon looks like it's fully lit. Okay. All right. So let's go on to uh, the eclipses. Okay. So the standard is to well, the standard learning target and success criteria excuse me are on them on the board okay uh, i'll have someone to read out the learning target students will learn how to uh, learn how eclipses occur and the success criteria is that students will identify what is uh what sorry i typo there uh, students will identify the conditions uh, that must be met uh, for an eclipse to occur. Okay. Um, so the essential questions that we'll be trying to answer during this lesson is what is an eclipse? How does an eclipse uh, form? How does a solar eclipse form? When does a solar eclipse form? How does a lunar eclipse form? And when a lunar eclipse occurs? Okay. So an eclipse is an, an ex obscuring of the light from one celestial body by the passage of another between it and the, the observer or between it and its source of illumination. Illumination, sorry. So this is the, the definition of an eclipse. Okay, but what this really means is that light uh, from an object is being blocked by another object. Okay, so in this case, uh, we're going to be talking about how the light from the sun is blocked by either the moon or the earth. Okay, so there's those are the two types of eclipses is that we'll talk about. Is one is the solar eclipse, and one is a lunar eclipse. Okay, <clears throat> so a solar eclipse occurs when sunlight coming directly from the sun is blocked by the moon passing between the sun and the earth. So here in this first image, we have the sun and the earth. And when a solar eclipse occurs, the moon would come in between, it would be orbiting around its orbit and coming in between the sun and the earth. Okay. So if you could look at the second image on the bottom, you could see that the um, there's a moon there in between the sun and the earth. Okay. So when the moon does come into this position, it casts a shadow over the earth. Because the moon is small in comparison to the sun um, and the amount of light that's hitting the earth, the shadow forms in two parts. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, so you could see here that the light from the sun is hitting the earth and the moon is blocking part of the sun. Okay, the umbra is what we call um, the part of the shadow that is cast over a smaller, narrow range. So if you look at this image on the bottom, you can see labeled the umbra. We have two parts of the shadow labeled pen, penumbra and umbra. Okay, and the umbra is the darker part of the shadow. 
people who fall under the area of the umbra will look up and they see a to total eclipse. Okay, so again, look at the image on the bottom, on the bottom, and you can see that the shadow is divided into the, uh, two parts, the umbra and the penumbra. Okay, it is rare for people to experience a total eclipse because they must be in alignment with the sun, moon, and earth. Okay, so I've drawn a dotted line here on this top image that when an eclipse occurs, the moon comes into alignment with the sun and the earth. And uh, only those who are in direct alignment will experience a total eclipse. As opposed to a, a partial solar eclipse. Okay, this is uh, when people fall under the shadow, uh, the part of the shadow that is called the penumbra. Okay, so it's the it's more commonly the part that, of the shadow that people fall under because it covers a wider range. Okay, the people who fall under the area are experiencing experiencing a partial eclipse because the viewers are, like I said, are not in alignment of the sun and the earth oh, and the moon. Sorry, the sun, the moon, and the earth. So they are off to the side of the umbra, which is the dark part of the shadow that you see there. And you can see the, the lighter shadow that is hitting the earth. That is called the penumbra. <clears throat> okay. So even though this is more common, um, commonly seen, the partial solar eclipse, it still does not happen often because both the sun and the moon have to be in the right positions in comparison to the earth okay. <clears throat> sometimes the earth is, or the moon is um off of the um what am I trying to say off the alignment it's not directly it doesn't fall in direct alignment with the sun and the earth so sometimes only a uh, Partial solar eclipse will be seen in some corner of the Earth because the the, the alignment will, is off. A total solar eclipse, even though it is uh, blocking over ninety percent of the of sunlight, sunlight does still get past um, past the moon, and it is harmful to the naked eye. So you should never you should never look at a, a solar eclipse without uh, proper eye protection. Okay, there's a third type of solar eclipse that occurs, and it's called the annular eclipse. And this is a little, this is even more rare because the annual eclipse occurs when the moon is in a farther position from the Earth than it normally is. Okay, so the the moon blocks uh, most of the sunlight, but and if the moon were be were to be farther away from the source uh, from the Earth and closer to the source of light. Because the sun is so um, so big and so much light is getting through, um, it forms this ring here that's called. Um, oh, I don't remember. There's no. Well, this is called the annular eclipse, where the a ring of sunlight forms around the moon. And on Earth, the shadow that is hitting the Earth is a third shadow called an antumber. Antumber, sorry. A-N-T-U-M-B-E-R. And you can see the difference here between the total eclipse in the top image and the annular, annular eclipse in the bottom image. One thing you could note also in this image is that the yellow uh, line that's drawn on the earth, that is the path that the moon is going to um, that the umbra is going to the un umbra and the pen umbra. Sorry, the umbra and the ant umbra. That's the path path that the the shadow is going to take because the moon is going to be in direct alignment with those um, those people in that path. <clears throat> so you can see it's a small range that gets. Um, that that of people that will be able to see the solar the solar eclipse because it's a small range that the shadow covers.